As happens every year, Transparency International has published its famous ranking of the most and least corrupt countries on the face of the planet. We are talking about what is considered to be the Rolls Royce of corruption rankings. The results are kind of sadly, very similar to those of last year. Naturally, corrupt systems are not transformed overnight, and even less so when there is an ongoing pandemic that captures all the attention of the public. For this reason, and due to the fact that we already have a video with last year's results, which I'm sure all of you have already watched, I'll pause here to let those of you who haven't go and watch it now, what we're going to do this time is not only take a look at rankings, but also take a close look at how corruption can completely destroy a country, and how, in the face of a natural disaster or a pandemic, its results can be even more painful. In this video, we will show with concrete examples how some unscrupulous people have made the coronavirus a golden opportunity to plunder the public coffers. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's start at the very beginning. So these are the countries that take the prize, the most and least corrupt countries on the planet. Any guesses? Let's get cracking and find out. Corruption in the World 2020 As we told you last year, as far as fighting corruption goes, there's still a lot of work to be done and we have little reason to brag. After all, more than two thirds of all countries fail dismally. Of course, having said that, there are better and worse countries. According to Transparency International, the five most corrupt countries on the planet in 2020 were the following. In fifth position is Venezuela, which is already close very close to giving the Bolivarian government the possibility of becoming the world's number one. So hang on in there, Venezuela, we're rooting for you. Even if getting there is due to bribes, kickbacks, and corruption of all kinds. Coming above Venezuela would be Yemen, Syria, Somalia, and finally, South Sudan, last year's world champion of corruption according to Transparency International. Then, at the other end of the scale, the most trustworthy countries in the world would be these six. Tied with 85 points each are Switzerland, Sweden, Singapore, and Finland. And slightly above them, tied for first place, are New Zealand and Denmark. Wow, I'm sure you're actually not that surprised. And you see, my friends, if we're looking at it by region, the ranking would look like this. New Zealand, Singapore, and Austria would be the three least corrupt countries in the Asia-Pacific region. In contrast, Cambodia, Afghanistan, and North Korea are the most corrupt there. In Central Asia and the former Soviet territories, virtually every country scores very poorly. But we still find better and worse examples. Georgia, Armenia, and Belarus are the three least corrupt countries of this group, although only Georgia scores more than 50 points, which would be something like a pass mark, but for corruption. And the awards for the three worst ones in Central Asia go to, of course, the stands. Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, and Tajikistan. Here, my friends, corruption seems to be almost something ingrained, characteristic. It's, it's basically a tradition. You could say that if you go to the stands and you don't pay a good bribe, you're sort of missing out on the real experience. But anyway, let's continue. In the Middle East and North Africa, the Emirates and Qatar stand out for the better, while Syria, Yemen, and Libya, which are basically three failed states, take the worst rankings, which comes as a surprise to no one. In Sub-Saharan Africa, despite what we might think, there is some good news. At least five countries pass. The Seychelles, Botswana, Cape Verde, Mauritius, which we've also covered in a separate video, and Rwanda. The worst grades go to Sudan, Somalia, and South Sudan. Bad luck there to the Sudans. Europe, on the other hand, is by far the best performing region. At the top of the ranking are Denmark, Finland, and Sweden, and at the bottom are Hungary, Romania, and Bulgaria. And finally, the Americas, with Canada, Uruguay, and the United States at the top of the rankings. At the bottom, well, here my friends, the bad news is that with the exception of Uruguay, Chile, Costa Rica, and the odd small Caribbean island, all of the other Latin American countries fail, and fail miserably. It's a region with a lot of politics, a lot of plans, and a lot of promises. But now, now is the moment of truth. Beyond this around the world in 80 bribes tour, the question, the big question that we can ask ourselves is this. Is all this corruption really that serious? Can envelopes, bribes, hidden payments and kickbacks really sink a country? Well, dear friends of Visual Politic, welcome to Honduras. Devastated by corruption. Okay, so, I know, Honduras is not the worst country in the world in this respect. It's not even rated as the most corrupt Latin American country. According to Transparency International, Nicaragua, Haiti, and Venezuela beat them at that game. But 
Honduras is a good example of a country that has been worsening in these rankings for years. And that, in 2020, has suffered the consequences of this enormous institutional erosion like few others have. To give you an idea of what I'm talking about, in this country, corruption is turning into such a toxic web that is turning the country into a failed state. An economically sunken country in which violence and political abuses are spreading like wildfire. A country where it is estimated that corruption alone could be one of the main economic activities. Check this out. Corruption in Honduras swallows 12.5% of GDP. 12.5% of Honduras's 2018 GDP was absorbed by corruption in its various forms, according to a tally presented in Tegucigalpa by an anti-corruption network organization. La Tribuna. We are talking about almost three billion dollars in what has already become one of the poorest countries in Latin America. A country which in 2020 has meant nothing but tragedy, pain and an open door to corruption. And my friends, when I say an open door to corruption, I'm not joking. The year 2020 began in Honduras with President Juan Orlando Hernandez's decision not to renew the mandate of the MACHI. Wait for this acronym. The Mission to Support the Fight Against Corruption and Impunity in Honduras, of which the Organization of American States had deployed in the country. This body was created in 2016 to combat corruption in Honduras. Well, since that year, MACHI has launched 14 operations against 133 people, including members of Congress and senior government officials. Take for example, the case of Operation Pandora, which detected how 38 high-ranking politicians and civil servants diverted millions of dollars, US dollars, from the budget earmarked for the improvement of agriculture to their personal pockets and, also, of course, to the pockets of the political parties they served in. Well, the fact is that after approving different measures during the last four years to make it impossible, or at least severely limit in practice the actions of the Machi, finally, President Orlando decided to kick the mission out of the country, which is hardly surprising, as it was a very inconvenient organization for the horrendously corrupt. But it turns out that that is actually not the worst of it. In 2020, we have also seen some legal changes that, among other things, have paved the way for, how shall I say this, a much more comfortable legal treatment for the horrendously corrupt. Yeah, that's right, that is not a mistake. I said more comfortable. You see, during the month of July 2020, a change in the penal code came into force that reduces the penalties for drug trafficking, smuggling, fraud against public administration, or embezzlement of public funds, among a bunch of other crimes. The idea has even been floated that, for corruption cases, prison sentences be replaced with other less restrictive punishments when the accused is sentenced to less than five years and the money is returned. So, basically, you can take part in a corrupt scheme, and if you get caught, well, by returning only what you've been discovered to take, you can avoid jail and start all over again. Hooray! But it doesn't end there. The criminal liability of judicial persons is left aside, and we know how certain companies operate in Honduras. We see numerous companies that enter into relations with the state, and not having criminal liability leaves much to be desired. Rigoberto Reyes, Honduran lawyer. At the same time, this reform of the penal code has also limited the media's ability to expose corruption cases, because of course it has. You see, my friends, we are talking about a reform that is already in force. Many of the congressmen who approved it, by the way, had pending cases with the Justice Department against them. Coincidence? You be the judge, find them guilty, and then they won't go to jail. But that president himself has been accused by US federal prosecutors of having received drug money to promote his political career. And, I mean, what can I say? It seems that that is not really a coincidence either. All of this is linked to a strategy, a systemic process coming from Congress and the executive who have weakened already weak institutions that go after crimes, especially corruption and drug trafficking, incite crime. And remember, we are talking about Honduras, a country where practically everything seems to be infected with corruption. For example, a study of public employees showed that these same workers considered that the two most important characteristics for getting a government job were to be affiliated with a political party in power and to know the right people. Check this out. In fact, it is well known that among the more than 220,000 bureaucrats in the Honduran government, many have been handpicked by politicians. Which, naturally, no one can deny that for winning, the support of civil servants is not really a bad strategy. You see, my friends, corruption is becoming so widespread that the ruling party itself 
the National Party of Honduras seems to have made this activity one of its political banners, by which I mean that they practice corruption rather than fight against it. It is even suspected, or rather basically taken for granted. It is an open secret that they have ties with drug trafficking groups. Do you want some examples? Just a couple? Well, of course you do, and here we go. Fabio Lobo, the former president's son, is serving a 24-year sentence. Then a New York court has found that the president's own brother is guilty of several charges, including conspiracy to import white powder into the United States. And just so we're clear, we are not talking about confectioner sugar. For his part, the president of the National Congress of Honduras, Mauricio Olivia, has also had links with narco groups. And the mayor of, brace yourself for a classic grant pronunciation here, Tegucigalpa, and the presidential candidate Nasri Asufra has accusations of corruption against him. As for the president, well, the president is actually playing in another division entirely. As I was telling you before, in an official document on the 8th of January 2020, the US federal prosecutors themselves pointed the finger directly at the Honduran president for links with drug traffickers and even accused him of having received money in exchange for promising to protect those drug traffickers and provide them with, are you ready for this? Military support to facilitate their activities. Mind you, we are talking about a guy who financed the political campaign that brought him to power with a scheme that plundered $300 million from the Honduran Social Security Institute. That's right, from one of the poorest countries in Latin America. The evidence gathered by the Justice Department in this and other cases leaves fresh questions about the government's highest ranking officials, including the sitting president, who's an important US ally. These officials receive millions of dollars from traffickers to finance campaigns and cement their power. Insight crime. The fact is, is that 2020 was a year that showed us as never before the implications that corruption can have for a country. And just in case you think I'm still exaggerating, check this out. Tragedies and violence. During 2020, Honduras not only faced the coronavirus, but also two devastating hurricanes. Two hurricanes that left thousands of Hondurans homeless and hundreds of thousands without access to basic services. An accumulation of disasters that some have, nevertheless, turned into a huge business. For a concrete example, check this out. After the SARS coronavirus 2 pandemic broke out back in March 2020, the government commissioned Marco Bogran, who was then executive director of the investment agency Inversion Estratégia de Honduras, to purchase seven field hospitals with 450 additional beds to provide facilities for the fight against COVID. Sounds reasonable, doesn't it? Apart from my horrific Spanish accent. Well, hold on a moment, because the operation was a rocky one. Marco Bogran commissioned a company that had its business address listed as a mailbox of a UPS office in Orlando, Florida, to purchase these seven hospitals for almost $50 million, amount that Trust me, it's a lot of money for Honduras. Well, it should surprise no one that more than $47 million were paid without even signing a contract, the terms of which were between 12 and 16 million above the usual market price. And that is not all. Despite supposedly being an urgent operation, the first two field hospitals took more than four months to arrive. And when they did, there was a huge surprise. They looked secondhand. They showed damage and came with, wait for it, no equipment for dealing with COVID. In other words, they paid through the teeth for hospitals equipped for intensive care and what they received were little more than secondhand tents many months later. And by the way, the businessmen who sold these hospitals of them, Axel Lopez is a guy who published a book in which, among other things, he explains how to do business in Latin America, including advice on, you guessed it, how to pay bribes. Quite frankly, I have nothing further to add, your honor. But take note, because this was not an isolated case. Several organizations have detected other inflated contracts for the acquisition of biosafety equipment, such as ventilators and masks. Equipment that, in some cases, has not even been delivered. Obviously, we are talking about a conduct that has cost not only money, but also human lives. And so my friends, if you think that is the bottom of the barrel, you are once again, I'm sorry to say, very wrong. Widespread corruption and the erosion of institutions has also accelerated another process, the conversion of Honduras into a narco state. 
Well, earlier we talked about the frequent relations between the political class and drug trafficking groups. I can now also tell you how violence is taking over the country and even how coca crops are beginning to spread throughout the Honduran geography. And so this, this is how Honduras is walking towards becoming a failed state. This is the story of how corruption is devouring this small Central American country. But now the question is over to you. How much do you think corruption could be overcome in this type of country? Leave your answer in the comments below. As always, we really hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit a like if you did and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos. Take it easy guys and as always, I'll see you next time. And if you want to learn more about politics and hear even more of my lovely voice, you can join us at Reconsider Media. We have a podcast at reconsidermedia.com slash podcast. See you there.